You're listening to episode 54 of the National Center for Writing podcast. Every week we talk about the writing life and discover exciting new projects. It's Monday 22nd of July here at Dragon Hall in Norwich. I'm Simon Jones and I'm excited to have a special episode for you this week in which Henry Sutton, the co-director of the Noir Ridge Crime Writing Festival, reveals the secrets and highlights of this year's festival. This is Noir Ridge's sixth year and it's a collaboration between us and the University of East Anglia. Every year we have an incredible lineup of crime writers, with this year being no exception. Tickets are available over at noirridge.co.uk. That's N-O-I-R-W-I-C-H with an extra I in noir. You can grab tickets for individual events or go for the season pass if you want a whole weekend to indulge in crime writing. So here's Henry talking to Beth Sowersby about this year's themes and writers. This year, as every year, uh, is incredibly exciting. I I don't particularly like the idea of singling out headliners because I think everyone we programme is a star in their own right. It's a really interesting, diverse and purposeful program. The theme or the overriding theme this year is the environment, its ecology, not just in relation to place um, and resource, but actually in relation to sustainability, to what crime writers are really interested in at the moment. Um, So we begin with the George Alagaya lecture he will be talking about South Africa, he'll be talking about a country that has been one way or another, or certainly in his debut novel, um, devastated by by civil unrest, um, which one way or another has been the product of environmental um, issues um, and pressures. So it is a, a, his novel is a response to the environment um, or a depleted resource in relation to um, that extraordinary country and how that has impacted on society. Um, and as we know, crime writing is, is one of the great barometers of of society of social justice um, and in a very contemporary even prescient way and obviously crime writing is really popular um, but it's popular for a reason and that's because it's it's pertinent Um, it's doing things and saying things that are important to us now the one advantage possibly um, of the genre is that, that that writers are writing largely in the moment they are um, reflecting upon what's going on around them and they write quite quickly so as opposed to perhaps what might be considered um, more um, straightforward literary work um, which might be more reflective and might take more time um, I think what's so interesting about the, the crime genre is that it is of the moment and increasingly you know writers um, are, are aware of, of what's going on in relation to the environment, in relation to the political upheavals that are also responding to what's going on in the environment. So following on from the eco theme, can you talk about the other events that we have happening on the Friday? Yes, well Friday is, if you like, the eco day or the eco evening of events. So, so we actually kick off the evening with Crimes Against Nature, which will feature um, a discussion between Corinne Le Courier, who is one of the world's leading um, climate change scientists and is a Royal Society Research Professor and is also based at UEA. Um, we're extremely fortunate to, to be able to, to have Corinne with us that evening. She, she is quite an extraordinary scientist, but also someone who actually loves fiction. She's a fantastic reader. She understands what the crime genre is doing as well at the moment. So she will be in discussion with Ben Smith, who's a lecturer in creative writing at the University of Plymouth, and he's 
the author most recently of a mystery novel called Doggerland, and he very much is part of a new wave of, if you like, eco-aware crime writers. And they will be in discussion, and that will be chaired by Nathan Ashman, who is a crime writing lecturer at UEA, and Nathan's specialism is eco-crime criticism. So, so I think we will hear from, from those three people exactly what the term means, exactly where possibly the most interesting and pertinent work within the genre is happening and coming from. Following Crimes Against Nature, we have A Bird, A Murder. A little lighter in tone, uh, this features Steve Burrows, who has a series of crime novels set on the North Norfolk coast, a lot of them set one way or another on the bird reserves, and there's a theme running through all his work um, in relation to that. Also on that panel is James Henry, who sets his novels in Essex, in Essex in the 1980s, um, very fast moving, fast paced crime novels. But again, uh, each of his novels, one way or another, has a, a birder or bird watching theme. His most recent novel is called Yellowhammer, uh, which should perhaps tell you quite a lot about uh, where that writer's coming from. Um, the writer himself is a particularly keen bird watcher. Also, uh, not to be missed that evening, um, on exhibit in the foyer in the Enterprise Centre at UEA is our annual British Archive for Contemporary Writing exhibition. We have some material from Denise Mina, who will be appearing at the festival on Saturday, and also Louise Doughty, who will be appearing at the festival on Saturday. Um, this material is extraordinary. It is, it is some, some early pages from their current publications, and it offers a fascinating insight to how they work. On the Thursday evening, we have James Runcie, um, who, who, apart from being a fantastic speaker, is also a great writer. And of course, um, he's, he's the, the person behind the Grantchester Mysteries. And really, he's, he's, he's looking at um, classic detective fiction. Um, and arguably that, that is perhaps a more uh, soft or, or purposefully entertaining area of the genre. I mean, this is the great thing about crime writing, crime fiction, that it does, it does cover a lot of distance. So as well as our panel discussions at Noir Ridge, one of the key features is the workshops that, that are held. Could you talk through the workshops this year? Yes, the, the, the workshops are, are, are a crucial part of, of what the festival is about. It's a, it's a festival for readers, but it's also a festival for writers. And that's only naturally so, given, given that it's part of UEA and our great creative writing heritage and, of course, National Centre for Writing and their work in the field as well. This year we have um, Claire McGowan who will be teaching one of the workshops and she will be looking at creating memorable characters. How can you put on the page someone that is completely distinct, that is recognisable, that is engaging, that we want to follow for the length of a novel or indeed a series. Claire will be looking at character ahead of plot. If we spin it round a bit, the other writer delivering workshops this year is Mick Heron, who, who of course, um, in, his, in his very contemporary spy novels, is a master at plot. He's also a master at character, but nevertheless, he understands how a novel can work um, with purpose, a novel that's full of suspense, intrigue and mystery. Um, so he will be looking, looking at those things. So I think both workshops, one way or another, if, if you're able to attend both of them, will equip you to, to really understand and hopefully push forward your own projects in, in really interesting ways. For Saturday, Noirage will be at Dragon Hall, as it will be on Sunday. We kick off Saturday morning with 
first offenders. Sarah Collins, Nicola Rayner and Kate Feinberg, um, three brilliant debut writers. Following the first offenders, we have the next twist with Julia Crouch, Lisa Jewell and Erin Kelly. The purpose of that panel is to look at where the psychological thriller might be going next. Next on Saturday, we have Louise Doughty, who will be in discussion with me, as it happens. Um, Louise's new novel, Platform 7, is a thriller. It's a literary thriller. It is the most extraordinarily suspenseful and moving novel I've read in a long while. Um, she's a writer who's, who's very much at the, the top of her game. And a strong connection to UEA there. Uh, yes, yes. UEA, of course, counts Louise as one of its great alumni. In fact, this year she was made an uh, honorary graduate and given an honorary doctorate uh, in a very um, moving ceremony. After Louise, we have Scandal in the City with Leigh Adinelli, um, Sarah Hillary and Vasim Khan. These three writers are concerned with place, which of course is one of our big themes this year. And they will be looking at, in particular, Lagos in Nigeria, uh, Mumbai in India, of course, and London. Um, and looking at what the crime genre is doing in those cities now, capturing the pulse of those places. And very different landscapes from some of the earlier works you mentioned, the, the North Norfolk landscape. Yes, and it's coast. Yeah, so I, you know, we're, we're, going, we're going to big, you know, metropolitan places that, that are forever growing, that are hugely dynamic, that are snapshots of, 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 of life being led very quickly. Following on from Scandal in the City, we keep with the international theme in our next panel, which aims to dissect Euro Noir. What does it mean to, to be a crime writer in specifically Germany, um, courtesy of Simone Buchholz, and Finland, uh, where we have representing that country, Antti Tumanen. Um, both writers doing really interesting stuff. Simone captures Hamburg, for instance, in the most interesting way uh, and really brings that, that fascinating city alive. Um, whereas Antti looks at Finland, um, Helsinki, um, and that dark, cold place. Um, but of course, her writing has a considerable amount of warmth to it. Finishing the, 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 the events on the Saturday, we have one of my favourite crime writers of all time, Denise Mina, who has published yet another amazing novel this year, Conviction. Boy, is she productive, but also brilliant. Um, this is another... Um, take on true crime, um, a fictional take on a true crime podcast, as it happens. Um, and she has a way with the form, um, a way of writing that completely engages. Sunday sees my favourite um, event, Bloody Brunch. Bloody Brunch encompasses two panels, Dark Past's historical crime fiction with E.C. Fremantle, Alex Reeve and Laura Shepard Robinson. Quite fitting it will be in Dragon Hall. Um, and all those writers are doing really interesting things with historical crime fiction, which of course, and as we all know, uh, one way or another is a reflection on the contemporary on the now, but with historical settings. So I'm very much looking forward to, to that event. Following dark pasts and perhaps after a Bloody Mary, we will return to the Great Hall 
to hear from Martin Walker. Martin Walker will be in discussion with MJ Carter. Both writers, one way or another, are obsessed with food, not just food, but actually gourmet food. Um, hence the title of that panel, A Taste of Murder. Um, Martin Walker particularly has created a great series set in southwest France, starring Inspector Bruno, Chief of Police, who is also an exceptionally good cook, somewhat like Martin himself. Finishing the Sunday and finishing the festival for 2019, we have Yusur Sigurdotia from Iceland. Yusur is one of the great Scandi noir writers. Her work is translated and published all around the world. And of course, Iceland is, is the sort of place that the physical environment is so all intrusive. It's so part of the part of the framework. Um, it, it sits there on every sentence. Yusur will be talking very much about place and the importance of that environment to her work. So this is the sixth year of the festival. Can you tell us a bit how, as, as festival director, you've seen the, the festival grow and develop across those years? Yes. Well, actually, as festival co-director, uh, along, with, along with Chris Gribble, of course, chief executive of National Centre for Writing. It's a great partnership um, between the University of East Anglia and the National Centre for Writing. Both organisations are, are deeply uh, committed to, interested in the literary, in literature, in good writing, in enabling that, um, and creating audiences for good work, for good new work. I think the significance of the crime genre is obvious, but in a way, UEA and National Centre for Writing's involvement within, within the genre, I hope um, not only captures and enhances what, what the form can do, um, but also try to investigate some of the key writers and moments uh, that are going on now, uh, and possibly even pushing the form writers, or rather allowing them um, to, to develop and move into areas perhaps that might be surprising for them. You know, it's about discussions, broad discussions, focused discussions. It's about seeing um, what else other people are, are thinking about. I mean, these are why, you know, literary festivals are important. Um, it's not just introducing readers to, to new writers but it's actually also about introducing those writers to other writers and, of course, to deeply committed and engaged audiences. These are, these are discussions that, that go three, four, five different ways, and it's, and it's bringing those, all those people and parts together that's so exciting. Thanks for listening, and thanks to Henry for delving into the festival programme with us. I hope to see lots of you show up during Noirage, either here at Dragon Hall, at Gerald, or up at UEA. If you have questions or want to get in touch, you can find me on Twitter at Tarnamus, or you can find the National Centre for Writing on Twitter and Instagram at Writers Centre. You can find our page on Facebook, or sign up to our newsletter at nationalcentreforwriting.org.uk, where you'll also find out everything else that we're doing. Please do subscribe, rate and review the podcast, because it helps other people to discover it. Thanks again for listening, keep writing, and we'll catch you on the next episode.